In order to have a successful website on Shopify, these are the things you need to have. I'm Zach Hall and here are the things to consider when creating your Shopify website. In this video I'm going to be going over my four biggest tips on why I've been able to drive massive amounts of sales to my website, so make sure you stick around until the end. The number one main thing to keep in mind is your customer's experience and how you can keep it positive. First step to doing this is determining who your customer is. Are they a guy, girl? How old are they? Where do they live? Once you know this, then you can start creating your website design to target your specific audience. Up until the point of purchase, customers are looking for any reason on why they shouldn't buy from you, not why they should. Our priority, again, is to make sure that the customers have a positive experience on our website, so we wouldn't want to do things like have a bunch of repetitive, negative content on our websites. We don't want to have a bunch of trust badges or things that don't necessarily need to be there because that stuff is going to hurt your conversions. Everything on your website needs to be strategic, whether it's the content you're posting or the positioning of a picture. Everything is strategic and everything on your website has to have a reason for being there. Keep your website simple and professional so that we don't allow customers the opportunity to procrastinate and leave without purchasing. So now that you've determined how you want to set up your website because you know your target audience, you need to put together a basic funnel with the least amount of steps as possible to drive sales. Reviews on your website are super important. They're really the one thing on the website that your customer can be sure of trusting because it's not coming from you. Reviews in the customer's eyes, they're coming from other people who have been in the same situation that they're in. So if your previous customers had a positive experience with your website and they left a review about it, then your current customer is going to read that review so they're going to be more likely to purchase from you because they can see that you have a good reputation Research does show that 91% of customers read reviews and 84% of customers trust those reviews just as much as a personal recommendation. My own personal recommendation with reviews is to make sure you have two pages of reviews on your product page. Reason being is I've tracked a ton of information across all of my stores throughout time and I throw heat maps on my website so I see that customers are very regularly clicking on the second page of my reviews and more times than not the customers that go to the second review page are the ones that purchase from me. So that could be another tip for setting up your website as well. Put heat maps on there and see where people are clicking, see where people are falling off. It's just going to tell you a bunch of information of what's working and what's not working on your websites. I've split test thousands and thousands of dollars on the concept of do reviews actually help sales on your website? And the answer is the same every single time. Yes, 100% yes. Reviews are a necessity to the success of your Shopify store. Tip number three is going to be making sure you have an SEO optimized website. An SEO optimized website is vitally important and essentially the lifeblood of your website if you're running a niche based store. SEO, which we dive very, very deep into in other videos, stands for search engine optimization. So when our SEO is on point, it's going to allow us to drive a massive amount of targeted people to our websites for free. The way to SEO optimize your websites is to make sure you have a bunch of relevant keywords, or another word for keywords would be search terms, in your content, whether that's in your regular description, your regular title, your meta title, your meta description, your alt tags, uh, your regular tags on your, on your page, you're all over the place. I mean, you can even save your pictures that are going on to your page as keywords, and it's going to help you rank and appear in more search results, which is going to drive free traffic and ultimately free sales to your website. We like free. And after our websites are optimized with keywords, then we want to focus on the other half of SEO, which is growing backlinks for our pages. We dive deeper into this in other videos, but a backlink is your web page linked onto another web page, which is going to tell the search engines how high you should be ranked in the search results. Keywords on your page are going to tell the search engines what results you should appear in, and backlinks are going to tell the search engines how high up you should appear in the search results. And tip number four, everybody nowadays is purchasing from their phone, which is why it's important important when you're creating your websites to make sure that they're mobile optimized. All the themes, if you're getting them directly through Shopify, are going to be mobile optimized. But if you're getting your theme from a third party seller, like Theme Forest, then you just want to make sure that the theme's mobile optimized because if people can't view your website correctly, then you can be sure that your website's not going to convert very well. A mobile version of your website is almost expected nowadays. It makes you more relevant and makes your website appear more modern because it's serving the needs of the person viewing it from their mobile device. When your website is mobily optimized, it's going to allow you to reach a larger audience of people and it's going to increase the reputation of your brand. Now you might be asking, what theme do you need? And there's really not a one 
one size fits all to success theme you can use with Shopify. It ultimately just depends on you with who your target audience is, what you're trying to achieve with your website, and what are the keys you highlighted. Like we went over before, we wanted to lay out those things. I myself have found a tremendous amount of success with a paid theme I have down in the description below, but you don't necessarily have to have a paid theme to see success with Shopify. So once you do some searching around, let's say you find a theme that you like, but it's missing a few options, that's completely fine. That's where the Shopify App Store comes into play. The App Store is where you're going to add apps to your website, or in other words, bits of code that are going to extend the functionality of your theme. So if the theme you chose doesn't have a countdown timer on it, and you've determined you wanted a countdown timer on your website, then you would just go over to the App Store and you would add it from there. In a lot of cases, apps do cost money. It could be more valuable for you to get a paid theme. It just ultimately depends on what you need, and here's why. Uh, paid themes are going to have multiple different built-in options automatically to them, more so than a free option. So if you determine you need a bunch of different things, it would make more sense for you to get a paid theme instead of getting a free theme and adding on the apps after the fact. Because apps are going to have a monthly fee associated with them, and then the theme is only going to have a one-time fee associated with it. So you can pay one-time fee or you can keep paying monthly fees on the apps. In the upcoming videos, we're going to be going over customizing your theme and what apps you need to add to your store. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more free Shopify dropshipping training.